We All are right. talking about The Craftsman by Richard Sennett. Uh, and it is, uh, it is the second book that Paul has recommended to me, but the first that I've actually finished. So it deserves some special promotion. Ah, okay. Right. <laughs> um, so what did you think? What did I think? Yeah. Um, yeah, well, uh, <laughs> it was really good. Um, <laughs> I think that it was, it was a more challenging book than I'd read in a long time. So thank you for, for giving me a, a goal to, to aspire to. I, I, I really like, I really appreciate, uh, Senate is the only writer who I've seen who actually has an answer to the question of what do we do with technology? Um, because everyone else seems to be, everyone's having this debate about is technology good or bad, but they don't tend to answer the question. And if they do, they answer it in a, single dimensional way of, of saying, well, technology is bad and you should go live in the woods or technology is good and you should upload your brain to the internet as soon as possible. Uh, and that's not, neither of those is a, is a realistic or helpful suggestion. Mm. Uh, um, and so Senate really gives a suggestion. He says the point of technology is to build a higher platform that we can stand on to reach the next level. And then we're going to, once we reach that level, we're gonna stand on top of that one and reach the one after that. And that's well, what we're doing. Let me, let me ask you this question. What did you think he was talking about when he was talking about the next level? Well, so he talks about craft. So for, for him, he's, he's talking about, um, I actually have my notes here. So, he's, so he says, doing a job well for its own sake. Mm -hmm. uh, so you're trying to do something. You're trying to, I don't know. Uh, with my metaphor of height, you're trying to fly to a higher uh, level above the ocean. You know, mm -hmm. so you have, you can jump. Okay, very nice. You can make a tower out of bricks. That's nice. You can make an airplane, you can make a spaceship. And as you do each, as you accomplish each goal and you uh, fail, you learn things. Mm -hmm. And the things that you learn allow you to reach higher next time. Yeah. So I think that's what he means. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I certainly agree with that. I, I also had the sense that, I mean, quite clearly he was, he was setting up, um, how shall I say, he was setting up paradigms so that he sees craft I thought that he saw craft from the perspective of, of um, problem solving, but also problem finding. He, he that was, yeah, that was and, revolutionary for me of yeah. problem finding. It's a good thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, you know, years ago I was in a, I was in a, a a seminar with Chris Finsk and Bill Haver. And one of the graduate students in that seminar, uh, I, was, I was just, I was a guest. Uh, one of the graduate students in that seminar made the remark that um, he wanted to simplify a particular problem statement. And I remember very clearly, this had to be 25, 30 years ago. I remember clearly Bill interrupting him when, as soon as he said, well, let me try to simplify this. And Haver interrupted him and said, you know, we're not here to simplify problems. Mm -hmm. we're, we're not here to simplify things. We're here to problematize um, in texts. And 
uh, to find problems, to, to, um, to pull ourselves you know, forward. And I'll never forget that. Um, and I, I always thought after that, that in my own work, I try to, I try to identify what the problems were and then I tried to, to frame them in various ways so that I could move my project forward. And, um, and so certainly he's talking about that and, and he states it explicitly. And then he's also talking about, I thought the creation of certain kinds of habits um, that support yeah. uh, those two things. And then thirdly, I thought that he was, he was kind of romancing with a certain kind of doubt. Um, and, and I think this goes to, to this whole question of problem finding but I found his relationship with doubt in the texts um, really provocative and really helpful. And I completely agree with you that, um, that he reframes this question of technology. Um, and, and he does that most conspicuously by introducing um, you know, the Linux coders Mm -hmm. and, and his conversations uh, with them. So I, I found that to be extremely helpful. Not that, um, not that the idea was new to me, but that it put, so in one sense it was because it put words to something that I had felt and sensed for a very long time. I mean, as you know, I worked in technology for a long time in the aviation industry. And, and I thought, and we were hand building a lot of instrumentation. And um, so it was this kind of weird, but entirely inspirational blend of, 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 of hand craft and, and uh, technical or in some cases scientific imagination. Mm -hmm. So that I always felt without having clear language for it, I always felt that I, I didn't look at technology as the enemy of craftsmanship, but I didn't have language for, for how to situate it. Yeah, I, I remember, uh, I don't actually remember the, the story about Linux in the book, I, I think he talked about their message boards and how they were sort of rude and aggressive with each other, but that was good because their their purpose was to write better code. Uh, yeah, and well, well were, I think the point is that he was there. Mm -hmm. you know, and in his investigation of craftsmanship, was that that he stepped into the to the world of Linux coding to understand the practice of craft problematizing, problem finding, um, you know, the creation of certain kinds of habits because coding is full of habitual behavior. Yeah. Uh, and, um, you know, as, as are many kinds of crafts, everything from ceramics and pottery making to, to um, you know, jewelry or whatever. So, um, uh, silversmithing, I mean. Uh, so the fact that he he went from there from those realms or or most conspicuously like playing the cello to writing yeah. code is a very very big very big deal right because people don't appreciate you know writers uh because uh it seems as if we're not we're because we're not building anything physical uh and uh, it's uh, Senate talks about this. He's, he says all craftsmanship, all skill begins with the hands. 
mm-hmm. and it's easy to see that when you're talking about playing the cello mm-hmm. uh, or playing the piano. He talks about how you have to let your fingers help each other when they're playing mm-hmm. the piano. But uh, what if you're writing code? So you are using your fingers. Um, But the habits aren't just in the physical movements that you're making, of course. The habits are also habits of thought. And uh, like you were were talking to Pavlina's programmers, uh, and and, and they were talking about, like, I don't use my hands to build a machine. I don't even write code for the machine. I write code in which you can put code that runs on the machine. So we're up to like three levels of abstraction. Right. Um, and that's exactly what that's exactly what I think Senate's point is about building platforms. Mm-hmm. Um, it doesn't stop being craftsmanship because it's become very high level and abstract. It's it's that's the point. You're you're building things so you can build more things. You know, yes. And I, I, I you just reminded me of something that um You know, earlier you spoke about this idea that, you know, the technology was bad and we ought to walk away from it and go live in the woods. Yeah. And when when you said that, um, you reminded me of Thoreau. Mm -hmm. Right. uh, And and one of the things that Thoreau says early in Walden Mm -hmm. is that he's gone to live in the woods. So in, I'm not quoting him precisely, but yeah. I, I went to live in the woods so that I could, so that I could avoid, in a sense, taking things for granted and pay greater attention to, to the practice of living. Mm-hmm. To be frank with you, um, the uh, coding requires the most intense attention to the smallest details in a realm uh, meaning typing and that kind of communication, yeah. right? In a realm where we 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 take so many things for granted, yeah. and the computers, you know, with auto correction and all of this sort of thing, fix everything as we're going along. We we spend more time making sure that they didn't misrepresent our meaning mm-hmm. than we spend making sure that we have said what we meant. Right. Uh, and so, um, you know, this is really a very, very high level of attention. And it, to my way of thinking, you know, entirely consistent with, with what Thoreau would have identified as, as an important thing to do in life in terms of forms of attention. Yeah. I, Thoreau is an interesting person to bring into it because I think that... Uh... I get the impression that um, it's like, you know, the, the, I, I might still do this. I'm playing a lot of chess with Maggie, my daughter, Uh and uh, she's eight, but it's getting harder and harder to beat her. (laughs) And one of the things that I realized that I do when I play chess is I, I halfway intentionally kill off a bunch of my pieces at the beginning of the game so that I have fewer pieces to concentrate on. Um, and I recognize, and I, I, as, as Maggie gets closer to beating me, I see that this is becoming a problem. It's a limitation. Uh, mm. And I, I think that a lot of people think about technology in that way, that wouldn't it be nice if things were just simple, if we could just get rid right. of all of this complexity so that we could focus on the one thing, uh, you know, I'm chopping wood, the wood will go into my fire, the fire will keep me warm. And that's, uh, and I, I can hold that in my mind and I can concentrate on that. It's much more difficult to think about we're mining coal in some other country, which we're burning in a factory far away, which is turning a turbine, which is generating electricity that I use to heat my home. And also it causes climate change. And that, that creates this anxiety. Uh, everyone is scared uh, in a way that they aren't if they're burning their own wood, even though if we all burned wood, we would have a much bigger problem. Be pretty messy. It would be pretty messy. 
uh, oh. so I, I, I really appreciate Senate's understanding that uh, the, the person who controls the electrical grid in your city, and it's not just one person, there's a team and each of them has their own job to do, mm -hmm. they can approach that job with craftsmanship. And the, the manager of that team can approach their job with craftsmanship. Mm 